August 23rd to 18. Welcome to the meeting of the Parks and Recreations Advisory Board of the City of San Angelo. Uh, we'll try to finish by 5 p.m. Public comment. The board takes public comment on all items in the regular agenda. Public input on a regular agenda item will be taken at its appropriate discussion. Public input in an item not on the agenda or consent agenda may be identified and requested for consideration by the board at this time. The board may request an item to be placed on a future agenda or for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for public comment. So uh, is there any, any Anybody has any uh, proposal to discuss anything at this time? No. Okay. Uh, as a first item that you don't have is to welcome Mr. Steve Hampton to our board. Um, Mr. Steve Hampton is right at the end over there on my left. Uh, Steve Hampton uh, is a retired funeral director and then Volmer. He's uh, originally for, from for Stockton. Uh, he um, moved here about eight years ago. Uh, as in for Stockton, he was very uh, involved in the community uh, as the Chamber of Commerce Board Ambassador Group Leader then he was uh, appointed member of the Pecos uh, County Hospital Board and past president, member of St Fort Stock Planning and Zoning Board, and finally he was elected to the Fort Stockton City Council. So he has a good pedigree to serve on uh, advisory board. His vision uh, is to make uh, the parks and recreation of San Angelo the greatest thing in the world, and uh, he has promised in writing that he will have a good attendance, which is very important for us because sometimes we don't have the quorum, <laughs> which was the case last time. So thank you, Steve, and, uh, and welcome. You're welcome, thank you. Now we go back to the regular agenda. The first item is consideration of approving the May 24th, 2018 Meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Do we have a second? Yes, I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion accepted. Now we go. Uh, we're going to the regular agenda. The first uh, item agenda uh, is the uh, formalization of uh, the South Central Park Disc Golf Course with improvement funded and provided and installed by the Council Valley Disc Golf Association. So, Carl, what do we need to know? First of all, a quick orientation. South Concho Park, and in one of these days we need to address the fact that we have two parks named South Concho Park, one, one at the lake and one in town. This one is in town. This is Bell Street on the east end and then over by Lone Wolf Bridge uh, and the dam on the other end. It's, so it's a long, narrow park. Um, that's the location. I would like to mention we've had a really good relationship with the Concha Valley Disc Golf Association probably going back 15 or 16 years. They're the ones that brought disc golf to San Angelo, starting first at the Middle Concho Park at the lake. And then we, we added courses along the way. This course was added some years ago. And uh, at this point, they, the association would like to formalize that course with some improvements. And just looking at the course, this is how it lays out. It begins about in the middle at this location. <clears throat> it heads this direction and swings around back this way. Continues on that direction. Then it bends around and then it heads back to where <laughs> it, be it began. So it runs the entire course of the park, except for trying to back up the slides. 
except for the very too far ends, but it takes up in almost the entire park. I would like to say that it's been an excellent addition to the park. It does see a fair amount of use. So some of the improvements they would like to do is add signage to each of the, the baskets or each of the holes, which doesn't exist now. These would be signs that they would pay for, produce, and place. That's just an example. Add the, the tea boxes where you throw the discs at each location. This one exists at a, a different location right now. It's just an example. Keep the existing baskets. A few of them may shift location just a little bit. Again, we've had a great relationship. Um, the improvements would be funded by the association. Parks would go back in and add some caution signs like we have at the other locations where we have disc golf courses. Um, just to warn folks that, hey, there is a disc golf course here. Be on the lookout if people may be throwing the discs. The only concern I have would be if, if any events are hosted out there, we need, work, need to work closely with the association because there's not a lot of parking out there. Uh, we've got to be careful. There are houses that are right next to the park. So if there is an event out there, make sure that parking is done on the ends where there isn't, isn't housing. But other than that, staff recommends approval. We do have Mr. Carl Walmsley here from the Disc Golf Association, and he may want to speak to it too. Thank you, Carl. Well, I, I think that uh, we can ask the uh, representative of uh, the golf, this golf association to come here and explain to us a bit more what the project is, how it works, how many people. Um, it, it, does he agree to take care of the parking problems? The parking problem that we have sometimes is that uh, we have a large turnout at the tournaments. We have one of the top five tournaments in the state every year. Last year, we had 216 players at the Crush on the Concho with a waiting list, and this is our second or third year in a row that this has been accomplished. We've been working on this for 15 to 20 years. Uh, Carl White and I approached this and started this years ago. I've been playing the sport for 31 years. I'm a professional master. Uh, I know the sport inside and out and what it takes to put on a good tournament. And I've trained a lot of people in town to do this. And over the years, it has built up and built up to where we are one of the top five, top 10 tournaments in the state. We have people that come from all of the United States and out of from foreign countries, Sweden, Mexico, Germany. They come to the crush here at San Angelo because it is right there on the lake. Uh, we have camping, we do a lot of added events. We make it fun for everybody. Our payouts for the tournaments are uh, top notch. Uh, nobody complains about them. We bring them from all across the United States, California, Michigan, I mean, everywhere. They come from everywhere to play this. We're on part of the tour as it comes from out of California in the springtime as our tournament is in March. We've been holding the same kind of weekend in March for the last 15, 16 years, and it becomes part of the tour as they come through California all the way through Georgia. So all the top people in the world come here. Last year, we had seven of the top 10 people in the nation here at our tournament last year. So we are expanding, we are uh, improving better relations through the disc golf community. And what we propose to do to this course is right now that everything is a dirt pad, they're throwing from the ground. They don't have any other improvements to, to do. So we want to improve this one to bring it up to more better tournament standards with concrete tee pads and proper signage and a little bit shift in the design just a little bit to make it just a little better for the players uh, and as Carl White says, to keep the, uh, the people in the parking away from the city, uh, the uh, housing that's along the road and stuff like this. So we want to do some actual improvements to that so that it does play better and everybody can sit and watch it and enjoy the tournaments. Uh, we have well over 150 players uh, in town. We have a lot of tournament players, tour players like myself in town, uh, a lot of thousand rated players here in town, which I've trained and taught over the years. And it's a sport that is up and coming, and it's been coming around in San Angelo here more as we have four or five courses here in town, and we do all the improvements ourselves. As, as an association, we raise the money, we do the construction, we buy the product that we put in, into our parks. And I appreciate Carl Vida and the parks for doing this because it's been absolutely awesome. Uh, we've, we 
try to do everything we can to improve the parks. We've taken a couple of the parks that have been out and put out of the system and put a course in there, and we try to maintain them as best we can. Some things, uh, trees fall or something, the city helps us with this, uh, which has been a good relationship. And we try to maintain that. And oh, there's just so much I could tell you about the sport, but I don't have the time. <laughs> Um, but we do enjoy our sport and we do want to improve it. Uh, we pay for this out of our pockets. We don't ask the city to pay for it because we want to improve it for ourselves, for our community and our d disc golf. And as well as other people, when they see and they play, they ask, what is this? And it gives us a chance to show them what it is and maybe they'll come out and play. And I'd invite any one of you to come out. I'll show you exactly what the sport is about. Any questions? Well, thank you. I guess if you guys have questions, now it's time. Yeah, I have a quick question. It, it'd be about the street that runs through there. The first thing I noticed, there's a street uh, park drive that runs right through the course. How do you, how do you control traffic on that? Do you, uh, during a tournament, do you restrict them, or how do you, because uh, there's always a nut around somewhere. Yes, sir. will decide to try to, he wants to make that a racetrack or something while you're doing it. Well, and, and, and that has happened from time to time. Uh, during the parts where we have actual tournaments, we try to get everybody to, uh, everybody rides, you know, we put four or five, six people in a car to cut, cut down on all the traffic because we do travel from different courses, like from uh, this course right here, they may go from here out to Middle Concho, out of the lake, okay, so they will drive. But along with the parking spaces that are in here, I know there's some uh, improvements that are coming down uh, along here that's in the works to add a few more parking spaces because they are limited. Uh, some of them do park in the spaces where you see the vacant areas where there are no houses. They'll park off onto the sides or up on the roads, but most of them try to take them into the parking lots, and we'll fill up the parking lots. Uh, the houses and things that are there, we try to tell people to stay away. Every now and then, one flies off over there. You just can't help it. Uh, but for the most part, everybody knows to stay away from those areas, and that's what we tell everybody. And on a day-to-day -day use, we don't have that issue because we do have plenty of parking spaces. Where hole number one is, uh, there's a practice basket, there's plenty of parking there. Uh, it would take uh, 75 to 80 uh, cars to fill up that portion right in there. And beyond that, then it's an overflow and they'll have to park somewhere else. So we do, we do try to maintain all of that. Yes, sir. In the layout of the course, the road, like he said, the road does cross through the course, but there's not a fairway that runs a fairway doesn't cross a road. No, we don't have any fairways crossing the road. Everything stays within the limits of the park. Where we do cross the roads, like you'll see on the, uh, that's the west side, it's, down toward it's the end over there, uh, where we cross over there, where the low water dip is, where the uh, drainage comes through. We do watch out for cars and stuff that are there, because it is in a big turn, uh, and everybody knows to watch out at that point. There's nothing that actually we throw across the road or anything like that. Everything stays within the park. The baskets, tee boxes, the layout. It's just like regular ball golf, but a little bit different because we throw things. We don't actually hit them with a club or something, but we're actually throwing them through the air. And when they're traveling three, four, five hundred feet, you need space and distance, just like on a ball golf course. So we try to utilize that, and we don't want any distractions with uh, roads, people crossing, things like this, because we always, the pedestrian always has the right of way, no matter what. So if anybody's walking, jogging through there, if a car's coming through there, they have the right of way. We wait. We don't mind waiting. It takes time. So during your tournaments, you utilize more than one course? Yes, we do. That's great. We have uh, three 18-hole courses that we use. This is one of them. We're developing another one or wanting to get that developed here in the near future. But we're using two out at the lake, Middle Concho Park. And then we get a temporary permit for a temporary 18 holes, which goes off back towards the dam. And we put that in, and everybody wants that one to be permanent, but there's too many camping spots over in that area, which is more permanent. So it is a temporary situation. But that's what everybody loves, is that side. The, the main place he's talking about is Middle Concho Park at the lake, where there is camping. I have another question here. How about uh, refreshment stands and, and things of that nature? Would they... Do you have any plans for that, where to put them and how to manage? No, sir. We don't have plans for anything permanent for refreshment stands or snack bars or anything like this. Um, reason being is that we don't have tournaments there every month. Okay, We have two large tournaments a year that we put on here. But every Wednesday night, we have what they call a mini, and they'll rotate between the parks. 
So we don't actually have a place that's permanent for like a concession stand. Okay, and if we do have uh, food and things like this, it's by permit for the tournaments. What's your local membership that you have? How many? Mm -hmm. uh, in excess of 150, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. These courses are used every day. There's people probably out on the courses as we speak that are out there. We know there's a lot of empty tennis courts, basketball courts, because it's hot. You know, and asphalt gets pretty hot. So we use the trees. We're out in the trees and the grass, and there's people there every day. We use them all the time. Any other question for Carl? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> do, we, do we have a motion uh, to formalize the... I make a motion to approve, approve the improvements as requested. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody against? Call for, it should call for discussion after the motion. Call for discussion for after, after the second motion, call for discussion. Oh. In, the, in the gallery. As a formality. <laughs> Public. The only discussion. discussion I have is I'd love to see more um, <laughs> advertising and marketing that you've got such a great program going. I mean, I watch the papers and I love that event or that sport and I haven't heard much, so. And you could probably get a lot of support, local support, when you have this big tournament um, twice a year. So anyway, I just encourage you to reach out. And, well, we do. When we put on the big tournaments, we get our sponsors and th stuff that are out there. Because we do a lot of uh, it benefits for the food bank and things like this every year. Uh, and we get help from the uh, community in that respect. Most of it are put on by the players. Yeah, we. We finance it, we put it on, we, we put it out there. A lot of uh, our local people like, uh, I don't know if I am, you know, Home Depot and a few others that, that definitely give to us every year, uh, Suddenlink, a few of them, uh, they've been great sponsors. So we try to, you know, put their name on everything. All the tournament shirts, you know, they all have uh, names and things like this from all of our sponsors. Uh, we, we ask all the community all the time. But uh, I've been in the schools, I've taught at some of the elementary Next schools. Question. Yeah. Um, I have a little bit of resistance from some of them because they don't really know what it is and they don't know how to approach it. So when I come up and I, I bring a lot of this and some baskets and I show some of the children, once they realize what's going on, they're okay with it. Because right now we have nine baskets sitting at, is it Lincoln Middle School? There should be nine baskets, I believe, right? Something like that. But they're just being there unused. And I've contacted the athletic department three separate times to try to get someone out there, even if it was myself. I've got my own business, so I can make time to get out there and show people how to play the game. But they have nine baskets just sitting there, and I would love to utilize them. But that's something that I can try to work out with the school, something like that. Or cancel. Yes, something like that. Um, we have a lot of potential. The first world championships were in 1976. I've been to Worlds three times, won national championships. Uh, it's a sport. I'm 62 years old. Been playing this game 31 years. And I would advise any of y'all if you need some exercise, it's awesome. We have a 78-year-old gentleman in Abilene, Texas with a doctor's permit to go play two rounds a day. It's excellent exercise, gets you out on God's green earth, and you enjoy an exercise, you know? And we do, we try to promote it as as often as we can. We don't actually have a program uh, like weekly commercials or anything like this, uh, but we do tell everybody that we see. And you just, all you gotta do is ask me and I'll show you. I'll get my bag and I'll get a disc and I'll put it in your hand and have you throw it. That's what I'll do. I've got a quick question, oh, and it, uh, pretty short, I guess, is uh, is there any extra maintenance of this? like? You have to mow the grass or something extra or something? Well, in the parks that we maintain, we do. Yes, sir. I mean, and with the help of the city and stuff, uh, you know, when we can't do it, they do. Uh, but we try to get out and trim trees and, and mow the grass. That's that's up to us and if, as best we can. If the, question, if the question is related to 
does it add to our maintenance level, the required maintenance? If there's an issue with a the basket, they fix it. If there's an issue with a the sign, they fix it. It doesn't, it doesn't really directly affect the landscape maintenance, the mowing and the trimming. No green fees or anything like that. <laughs> no, sir. Oh. No, sir. This, this is all No all revenue three. yet. <laughs> and as much as I like to play ball golf, and I play disc golf uh, a whole lot more, uh, but there's no green fees. Anybody from any age can come out and play this at any, just about any time. We even have night tournaments where we come out and put lights on the disc and we play at night. So it, it's an option to do a lot of things with a lot of people, and we try to do that every chance we get. You know, I'll, I'll be more than happy to show uh, any of the elementary schools, junior high, high schools, things like this. There are high school teams throughout Texas where they have actual teams from the high school that compete against each other. Uh, there's uh, junior programs, EDGE program. I believe the EDGE program is at Central High School, as I was told. I don't know who's running it right now, but I will check on that. But we do have uh, programs to promote this. And uh, there's just one of me, and there's a lot of golfers. But as you know, most of you know, the 10% do for the 90. So I do what I can, and I try to teach the other 90 to do the same thing. That's what's so cool about it. It's anybody, any age, and families can play together, too. Absolutely. I mean, it's just yes. a, a super yep. sport because it's free, any age, yep. any yep. ability, really. It's all at a, at a public great. park. Yeah. And so the discs, how much do, does a disc cost? I know you guys anywhere have from, different weights for different Anywhere holes. from 8 to $30. Yeah. Play with them for a long, long time, as long as you don't throw them in the river. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they sink, huh? They don't yes. float. Yeah, they do not float. <laughs> we suck, so. They have some that float, but they don't fly. <laughs>
if you have any questions about their activity. Why don't we ask the, this representative to come here like we did for the first one and you explain you, your view of the, the question and then we ask questions and then we discuss these questions and then we can eventually vote. Here we go. Hello, I'm Devin Jemison, um, co-founder of the uh, San Angelo Bandits. So um, we have four teams and a cheerleading section. So right now we currently have 115 athletes on our whole organization, so it's not just one team. It's a com combination of four teams in the cheerleading sections. So that's why we need the big field so we can hold all four practices at the same location at the same time. And uh, the reason we want to go to Glenmore towards the end of the season is because Kirby doesn't have lights, but Glenmore does. And when we make it to the playoffs, after the time change, yes, we do have a playoff, I've seen that. The only only team in San Angelo with the playoffs, but when we do make it to the playoffs, it's dark and then we it's kind of hard to have practice at nighttime at Kirby, so we go to Glenmore. But Kirby is more of a central location for all of our parents and for like, mo uh, we actually been on the news, the news people like to come out, radios, like a lot of people been coming out to check us out, so it's kind of like a central location, and it's easier for people to access. Kirby Park to actually come check us out and see where we are. So that's why we really like Kirby Park. Thank you. Any questions for this yeah, gentleman? What's the, what's the age limit or what's the age group in this? All right, so we have four teams. So flag starts uh, at ages four to six. First, first tackle starts at uh, seven and eight. Then you have nine and 10, 11 and 12. Cheerleading is from four all the way to 16. Any other question? Thank you, sir. I, I had one more question. Yeah. You you practice at Glenmore. I mean, you practice at, um, at Kirby Park. Kirby Park until it gets dark, and then you switch over to. Kirby. No, so right now it doesn't get dark until almost nine o'clock. Right. And so you're only using one park right now. Yes, ma'am. Um, we're done practicing there about seven forty-five, eight o'clock. So I guess my question to Carl is. Do, are both parks reserved the whole time, or, or is it just we according just get to one the and schedule? Then okay, when I we got switch you. over, we, we only use one at a time, not both. If this is approved, we would block out their, their times at, at those locations. Where are the games played? So we actually travel. So we have four games here in San Angelo, which um, I have a contract with the uh, Independent School District for uh, – Lakeview's old, old stadium. So that's our home games. We have four games there. And then we have um, we have two games in Lubbock this season. We have one game in Midland, and we have a game in Odessa. So we actually travel through West Texas, and then based on how, how well we do in West Texas, we will go to uh, the playoffs, and then we travel all through um, Texas. Last year, we played Flugersville. Um, in the first round, we didn't didn't make it past the first round, but that was our first year we made it to the playoffs. So we're looking to do the same this year. I think it's a good alternative to a contact football. Absolutely. Well, there's no contact involved. I mean, other than. Well, it is contact, sir. We only have one flag age group, I'm sorry. That's four to six. Then seven to 12 mm -hmm. is tackle. OK. Any more questions? I have a yes. question. This is a new uh, uh, league, and how many other towns are involved in it? You said they go to a state thing. All right, so I, I don't play through the REC or the YMCA. I play through TIFA, which is Texas-wide. So um, almost every city in Texas has a team in TIFA. But um, West, West Texas is the smaller division because – not not all the teams, oh. but most of them do. But when you get to uh, San Antonio, there's a hundred uh, different organizations in San Antonio. In Houston's, there's 75 different different organizations. In Dallas, there's close to 80. Um, they added a few, but uh, when I went to the meeting in uh, February, they had uh, 77, but they added a few, so it's close to 80 now. How long have they been organized? 
Um, Typha's been around for 16 years. 16. Yes, sir. So really your only competition local, locally with the same sport is the Gray Y football program. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you this time. Hopefully you might get recalled. <clears throat> so any discussion we want to have about this among ourselves? <laughs> Well, you recommended basically that we approve. Yes, it, it's worked out well the last couple of years. I mean, ideally we'd like to be able to find them a permanent home, but we just can't do that. So we'd like to accommodate them as best we can. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the staff recommendation on this project. We have a second. Second. Steve, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Any, any, any discussion from the public? Any comments? Sorry, I forgot. We got the comments. Okay. Sorry. Mayor does it too. Sorry, Carl. Okay. <laughs> we, go, we go again. Every, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? No. Motion passes. Next, uh, consideration of allowing a pilots and <coughs> yoga class to be offered to the public, free of charge, at Kirby Park on Monday nights. This is a new uh, request. Uh, the representative isn't here today, so I, I'll speak as best as I can. It's a new class that's offered. Uh, I think it, it, at first she was looking at Civic League Park, the new pavilion there to hold the classes, and we encouraged her to go to Kirby Park because of the large pavilion. There's restrooms there, there's plenty of parking, and she, she agreed to that, that possibility. So this will be on Monday nights, 6 to 8 p.m., basically the end of August through almost the end of September. Be, again, Kirby Park on the northwest side of the city. It would be at the pavilion. And the pavilion's quite large. There's two, there's two basketball courts underneath there, one here and one here, and then there's extra space um, that's used for, often for events. <clears throat> we'd recommend that she only be allowed to use uh, one court, probably this court that's closest to the end. It is a private business, but she assured us she's not charging for this. In my mind, if she does charge, it does change the nature of it. As you know, we set up recently a, um, a rental fee for this, but it doesn't fit that category. It's not it's not a family reunion, it's not a company party. She doesn't need it all day. So we don't really have a fee structure set up for it. And we don't often get requests for this short term um, outside of special events, which is a separate process. Again, it's a first time request. <clears throat> Other considerations, we require to have insurance for her activity, um, get an assurance for her that she's not written assurance from her that she's not charging fees, limit the use to one half of the pavilion, and have her report on the activities after the, the program, report to us, and if you'd like to have that report, we'd forward it to you. And with those considerations, staff recommends approval. Questions for Carl? Maybe I'm the only one here, but what are pilates? It's pil pilates. 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 Yeah, it's a right. it's a type of ex <laughs> exercise that stretching and I like yoga. Yeah. yeah. With the ball. It's a it's a fitness activity. Do you have any idea how many people they're expecting? Twenty to thirty, maybe. She does, this is the first time, so she's not sure, but twenty, maybe thirty at the most. Carl, do you know where she's advertised this? And when I was reading her um, application or permit. It said that it was going to start August the, tw the 20th. So has she had anything yeah, already? She was going to go ahead and have her class on Monday, but she didn't even think since it was the first one that there would be that many there. Um, OK. Did you happen to know I haven't where, talked to her since then. Or um, she had advertised or something? Because I had heard about 
a yoga class being at Civic League, and I don't know if this is the same lady or not. I don't think it's her. Uh, she's a nurse. That's why she wasn't able to make the meeting today. <coughs> and to, to her credit, okay. she has contacted us. There are other groups that just show up and have their right. classes that, I mean, it, right. we prefer that folks work with us so that we kind of head off any conflicts of views. Well, in her packet, it ha she had the proper insurance and stuff like that, so that I, I'm she, likely to think that. She also contacted the senior services because she is certified for teaching a class to seniors and was oh. interested in having one for them, too. I don't know how that went, but. And that would also be free of charge to the seniors. Did we check if we need to be certified to practice that kind of exercises? Because if we need to and she doesn't have it, the city would be at risk. Mm. Uh, we do have the city. To the best of, of my knowledge, I don't here. think there's a, um, in yoga, but we probably ought to, I've been out of the business for years but there didn't used to be a certification for yoga directly but there might be by now. We have it for the instructor. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There is for that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and the, and there are, and there that. is for some yoga. We, we can ask her what what qualification accreditation she has. Okay could we uh, <coughs> basically recommend to accept the proposal subject to checking the certification of the person, the instructor? Would that be okay? We'll check with her to see what qualifications she have and I'll, we'll, we'll forward that to y'all. If you have any concerns, let me know. <coughs> if, because I'm not sure there is a certification for that. If there's a need for certification, we need to make sure she has that certification. My understanding that she does, but I don't know for sure. I didn't see anything. I think to be able to use the word Pilates, she'd have to be. Ah, uh, it's a good question to ask. Because it's certification. Yeah. Yeah. certification. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could make that motion. Okay, good. That's and a good question. It's a good requirement. To I don't, ask I don't want to basically uh, push that to the next yeah. meeting yeah. because we're already late. Right. But on the other hand, I would like to make sure that we are not recommending something that would put the city at risk. Okay, so that would be the motion. Do we have any other discussions? Public disc nobody in the public? Nobody here around the manners? Okay, so do we have a motion? Well, I can make the motion on the recommendation of staff that we go ahead and approve this. Subject to? Oh, sub subject to the certification um, as that she's instructor. as a, as an inst certified instructor. Okay, Ida, you have that. Thank you. <laughs> you have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Say hi. Hi. Opposed? Okay, the motion passed. Uh, next is the consideration of a list of Lake Nathworthy Parks and Recreation related improvements. Okay, so um, you all have the list and it is the list revised as of August 1st. Um, I met with uh, Carl before the meeting and uh, I think we would have to entertain two motions. The first one would be to uh, put on the CIP the items, improvements that are not cons already on the CIP. And that would be the trail from neighborhood Walmart to Bridge along Knickerbocker. That would be the hillside trail and the creation of the wetland burning area or areas. So the first motion I, I would think would be to put these three items on the CIP. The second motion would be to provide a, a, a certain uh, an order of priority for these improvements. And we don't have it on this page, but Debbie 
uh, who is part of the HOA uh, has that order. So in order to save time, I would like to, somebody to entertain the first motion that we add uh, the improvements not in the CIP, on the CIP. Do we, ha do we have a, a motion? I'll make a motion that, as shown on improvements at Lake Nasworthy, that the list of those items that are not yet on CIP be put on CIP. Okay. Francis? Do we have a second? Oh, do we no. want to discuss that? And that, that process <coughs> will begin in January, so it'll okay. be about that time frame. Okay. So it's more that we're just, that it'd be suggested, I guess it'd just be, you're going to suggest it be put on CIP. CIP is actually um, determined by the city council, correct? Yes, that's right. We'll, we'll recommend to put it on. Okay, gotcha. Okay. What type of details do we need in moving forward with getting these items on CIP? To put it on the CIP? Uh, when you put an item on CIP, you have to explain the scope of the project, what the estimated cost is, possible funding sources, so those kinds of details. And there's no assurance that it'll get on CIP. E even if it does, it may get listed as a future project, which means it's in the CIP, but not targeted for execution within the, f the next five years. It'd be after five years. So it, it, it would be helpful for us to give you some more, some additional guidance as to what, what would be the top three priorities. I think in that's the next forward. item. It would be yes. the next item. Okay. Francis, did you want to include the miniature golf and the trails around the parks and that's lakes? A good, that's a good question. Uh, those, those I, dis are not I discussed it with, um, with Carl. Uh, I think the process is that whatever we want to do, it's got to be on the CIP. And then for this item, we could say we would entertain some offers from private investors or uh, operators to uh, take care of that item, something like that. So for me, just to create a list that corresponds to what the HOA desires and make sure that we work in, uh, you know, to try to develop the, the lake amenities. Now it's up to the city council to basically decide what they want to do and how fast they want to do it. Uh, I think our role is not to basically tell them you can't do it or you can, cannot do it or whatever. I mean, that's theirs. But I think in the interest of developing Lake Nathworthy, this is what we have to do. So that means you want to go ahead and leave off like the miniature golf yes. because it would be more commercial endeavor? And then what about the trails? The, the trail definitely for me was, uh, and we discussed last last time, was probably the easiest way to develop the area and make it more available and for, uh, to all the tourists and the uh, homeowners. Uh, okay, if you look so at the cost, uh, I mean, I was the removal of the old pier, for example, yeah, uh, the, and create have a fishing pier was four hundred fifty thousand dollars. The, the trail development, we never get to that yeah. amount of money. Quick. Quick clarification on the trail projects. The first one listed is basically connecting the neighborhood around the neighborhood Walmart to the lake. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the second one is the hillside trail, the, the hill, that, 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 popular, that popular area where folks are walking on yeah. the road, create a trail that gets them off the road. Last and the last one, trails around lakes and parks, is kind of a trail network in the parks, the lake parks themselves, and connecting neighborhoods to those parks okay. as a clarification. Okay. More discussion about that first motion that is to include in, uh, in the CIP or recommend inclusion in the CIP, the items that are not in the CIP on that list. More discussion? Do we but have we're a crossing out miniature golf, correct? No, uh, I, I, what I, I wanted to do it, but maybe a, a second Reading, I thought that since we wanted to give the uh, some form of a green light, all this all this project to the city council, the city council can decide to do it uh, on their own money, or so 
basically advertise for operators to do it. Um, you, see, you know, there, there's a, we, we, we talked about that last time. There are projects around the, the lake that have been proposed, as you know, in the uh, survey. And uh, these definitely cannot happen because there's no sewer system. The mayor assured me recently that she w had an interest to look at the sewer system and its improvement in order to allow developments, uh, commercial developments. In that way, I, I think that by including here something that can become a private project just doesn't hurt. And then we have some items on the list here that are maintenance related, like the vegetation control and annual shoreline improvements and riprap of any erosion. Well, since they are so not capital the projects, <laughs> uh, you know, it's up to, uh, I guess, negotiate, negotiating with the Parks and Recreation Director <laughs> the, this, these subjects. Uh, I guess my question is, what do we do with those items? Okay. Well, we, uh, the first step is to separate out improvements from maintenance, which we've done in this chart. And the maintenance items, it's just a matter of connecting with the right folks, making sure that it's, it's in their, on their schedule and in their budget to do and approved to do. A lot of this work is would be the operations department to do. And, and just for clarification, <clears throat> the lakes and the lake themselves are maintained by the operations department, not, not parks and recreation. We have over administrative oversight of the parks do the, the lake gates and coordinate activities out there, recreation activities and events, special events, but we don't do the maintenance out there. It's a separate department. So we, I, th I think it would be good. You could, the, this board can make any recommendation it wants to related to those maintenance items, but I think it would be good to make sure that's communicated to city management as well, those, those bigger items that are outside of our purview. Any more discussions about that first motion, which is to include the items that are not on the CIP now, a recommendation to the city council to add it? I'd like to make a second to. I have a question. Oh. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, Carl, as the, uh, isn't there a homeowners association? Uh, fund isn't there a fund that they have out there are they uh wanting to contribute to these improvements there is a lake nasworthy trust fund and okay. it's it's very protected so the city only uses the interest that comes off that trust uh, but it is dedicated to the lake and the lake improvements right um now the homeowners debbie's with the homeowners association so they know about that as well i think there is some interest in maybe using some of that trust fund for some improvements maybe even more improvements that are that are on our list but that does take a public referent, referendum to be able to get permission to use that first city council approval and then a public referent, referendum but they've made no mention about using some of those funds to uh, finance this I think, these the, I think the first idea is just to figure out what it is we all are interested in doing, okay. which is what we're trying to do. And then the next step is pr to prioritize those lists and then make a recommendation as to what we think should blow up to the top. I don't know if it's still germane to the issue or not, but how are we going to get from the neighborhood Walmart to the Lake Bridge? You know, we talked about that once. Did we ever discover who's got the right-of-ways and how we'll get across the railroad tracks and all those kind of issues, or is that somebody else's? That, that would all have to be worked out, but it's it's possible to work it out. It's, we know there's, different, there's different players in there, and we have some property along the way, and others own different properties. Textile has purview over some of that. It would be a big endeavor, but it could be done. And it is, I would like to mention, it is in the, the bike and pedestrian master plan. It shows that connection. 
The only thing that's been added to that is as you go along that trail, create an area by that wetland so that folks can interact with that. Okay. Then uh, we had a motion and we had a second with Laurie. No discussions? Public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We have received that uh, voted against the motion. Did, did you vote against the motion? I did. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Okay, so the motion passes. Now, the, the second part of that, as I explained when we started, is to basically prioritize these projects, which was really the, the major goal of this, this meeting. Uh, Debbie, what is, are the suggestions of the HOA? Their top on their priority list was to repair the existing boat ramps and a recommendation to add a floating dock at each boat ramp and a porta potty if possible. And well, that's three different three items, but um, that was their their priority out of all the items that they've you know come quick, up with today. Quick <laughs> clarification there: only two of those seven are listed. <clears throat> Middle Concho, because that's already been approved project, and. Uh, we have a grant for that as well as matching funds. That's why it's listed. South Concho Park is, is on the, the CIP, uh, but it's not funded. So the recommendation from the HOA would be to prioritize the South Concho Park boat ramp. Which basically, we, we give to the older people on the east side access to the lake. Yes, and I think what makes sense is um, at least getting one one boat ramp in each area functioning, up and running and functioning, you know what I'm saying? Because there's, like South Concho has two boat ramps, don't they? Yes. South Concho. Uh, One. Might be. The North Concho, we know which one that is. Are you talking South about the, the, river, the river or the park? South Concho Park, which, which ramp is that? Ex I can't zoom specifically? in, it's right here. <laughs> It's the one right there. <laughs> so it's on South Concho. Yes. South Concho Drive. And then there's South another Con boat ramp just east of that. Yeah, I can, can't Two really on that on South Concho. That's what I'm saying. At the park. Yeah. There's one right across from. <laughs> boat ramps. I wish I could zoom in. So we could add there's one all these. just as you, if you're traveling from Stripes and you're coming down South there's one, Concho, two, there's a the first three, boat ramp on your left. Four, right? Five. Correct. And then there's another there's a second boat ramp at the end of the park. Are you adding that one? No. No, you're not. Uh-uh. No. There's two on South Concho. <laughs> oh, yeah. I believe you. Yeah. I used to own that property right across the street from it. We're, are you from the Dakota yeah. farm, there's a there's the a ramp right end? across from the old Dakota place. Yeah. Is that it right here? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, what makes sense to me is at least get one. You know, there's two boat ramps there owned by the city. That's but at least get one, one up and running, and try to put a floating dock in the near in the area. And I always think a porta potty would be a great addition as well. We have added this one, that's new, at Spring Creek Marina. The next one, the middle concho is this one. The thought was to address the main one at South Concho Park after that. So that's three, and that kind of gives you a range. So, so what would be after that? You mentioned Knickerbarker doing some improvements there. There is another boat ramp in South Concha. It's a little bit farther down, yeah. straight across. It's, it's, it's got to yeah. be that one. Yeah, but it's right there. Most folks one. use that, but yeah. okay. Doing one at the park would be good. <laughs> right. That's 
that would be priority one in each area anyway. Uh, I don't know what kind of shape the one across from Pack Saddle, that boat ramp. Does it have a floating dock? Talk about Beatty Road or no. just talking right about across from Knickerbocker. Pack Saddle, Knickerbocker, yeah. Sorry, Beatty, Beatty Road is up there. I don't think I've heard complaints about that one. That's Beatty Road, off. this is Knickerbocker. Right. The only thing at Knickerbocker is, I mean, there's no, there's no porta potties, is there? So, where do we go? Where do we go? Well, I, I hate for us to ask for too much. I mean, in other words, well, seven I, I ramps think, yeah. <laughs> is a lot of ramps. Ask. And, you know, <laughs> I know, ask and you shall receive, right? Uh, <laughs> Prioritize. No, them. Right. Well, ask and it'll get reduced, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's right. Well, the that's danger right. if you ask for seven uh, improvements, uh, there won't be any budget for the rest. And the idea would be, okay, these people, they're all boating people, and they want to have ramps to have access to the lake. No more joggers, no well, we more. Need the, the, the issue at hand, and, and there's a boat ramp on um, Red, Bluff Sir, Red Bluff Ramp Road. It's actually called Red Bluff Ramp Road, and that, mm -hmm. yeah. that boat dock's been closed for yeah. many, many years. The issue with our boat ramps, a lot of them are they're um, dangerous, <laughs> okay? <laughs> they're dangerous. And not only for the people using them, but for boats and trailers and that kind of thing, because they drop off and they need maintenance work. And that, that's the whole issue is safety and being the public being able to use, use our lake to be able to put boats in safely. Um, and so I think that's the direction we're trying to go is, is to get the boat ramps that are very dangerous back up to at least safety a safety level where they can be utilized you without. You want more lakes? On, you want more hurt. boat on the lakes? Correct. Pardon me. You want more boats on the lake? Yeah, we want more people to utilize our lake. Absolutely. I was out there last night. I was the only boat on the whole lake. Is that right? You know, but I'm just saying, it, it, people okay. are going to come. There aren't many lakes in West Texas, and they're coming, and we want them to be able to utilize our lakes safely. Well, we, we need clarification, though. All these uh, ramps are on parks. They're on city property. All of them? Yes. Okay, so you're right. Carl, um, I, I know that I'm new here, and I, don't, I, don't, I haven't got the uh, locations of all these ramps down, no, nor do I understand what is needed to, to repair them. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe we might uh, postpone this somewhat and uh, and get a little uh, more information and pictures about what we're talking about. We okay. can. I think I th I th it sounds like it's a little um, like huh? yeah. It sounds like uh, it's not it's not clear in my mind exactly what all that is being asked. Well, it's not clear in anybody's mind because we only have two ramps. Here, one is funded partially, the other one has got nothing yet, it's not even not funded. And then there are five others <laughs> that uh, seem to need some form of repair and additions of restrooms or whatever. So I, I think the idea would be, thank you Steve, to uh, come up with the list of these seven. <laughs> And, and come back with a and priority list as to one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six. Yes. Maybe we don't need all seven up and running again, but I think the point is from the Lake Homeowners Association is they would like at least one functioning boat ramp to serve a neighborhood. Right. And the Red Bluff area right now um, is not being served because that, that Red Bluff Road ramp was all closed this area. years ago. That's so that's a sore, sore point, how, you know, for those people. How do the race people. boats get in? <laughs> well, the race boat, they have their own ramp now. <laughs> brand, brand new and very yeah. efficient. The drag race, the big boats, they have been served. We, we can expand this presentation with pictures of all yes. the different projects. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be a great that's idea. Amazing. Now, to not lose too much time next time, uh, Debbie, what are the other priorities <laughs> on that list? Yeah. So we know. <laughs> the 
second priority yeah. um, oh, that right. the That's homeowner association right. had was to replace the Knickerbocker public fishing dock and add a, some type of covered shaded area um, on it when when we do replace it, it's when the city replaces it. It's the one. Um, and the feeling for that is um, not only do the lake homeowners use would like to be able to have a place to go fish, but we think it's a, definitely a need for the whole community of San Angelo. Um, it's the one right behind the, the right behind the nature center. Right, correct. Off of Knickerbocker Road. Okay. Next. Next. Their third item on their priority list was yearly shoreline improvements and vegetation control. So that's not really a recreation and parks related item. So we're going to move on. <laughs> um, the fourth thing was um, updating the existing restrooms around the lake and trying to get them connected to city sewer at whatever point in the future that we can. Because right now we feel that's a uh, issue health issue for those that live around the lake with the way the restrooms function at the at this point in time and they'd like to see uh, um, especially on the holiday weekends when there's a lot of uh, visitors visiting the lake that that porta potties are put out where needed so that the restrooms aren't overflowing and we don't have people without restroom facilities to be able to utilize any of the businesses that are out around the lake um, in a position where they've got, got to let people use their bathrooms because there's no bathroom for any of them to use. So anyway, that, that's okay. just on the priority list. And are we satisfied with a priority list of three to send to the uh, city council Office. for consideration? I thought there was interest in revisiting this in more detail with pictures and. Oh, I understand. No, no, I understand. But I'm, I'm saying that we want to look at other, other more priorities. Oh. Because we know what will happen. It probably is the city council. We take the priorities and forget about the rest. And their their fifth priority was also somewhat maintenance related. It's um, just the yearly maintenance of existing beaches. Um, out around the lake, which are Mary Lee Park and the Horseshoe Beach. Um, they just want to see yearly maintenance of those to keep those healthy and safe for people to utilize. Um, and possibly the addition of a new one um, west of Spring Creek Marina as it sits now. There's a, st a strip of, there's kind of a peninsula that goes out west of um, Spring right, Creek Marina, and they right thought here. that might be a great location for a third beach. This you know. Right here. In the city <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, I, I think that uh, based on Steve's proposal, we will postpone this review of priorities to the next meeting, starting with the uh, look at uh, the different boat ramps and what they require and uh, what would be necessary is five or three uh, or all of them from the HOA point of view. No more discussion on these items? Steve, do you have anything to add? No? Okay, so we look at it next month. And now we're going into the uh, program updates. Yes. First, the project updates. Yeah, please. Oh, the, the, long, the long awaited project to add restrooms at the Texas Bank Sports Complex at Quad 2, the Station 618 parking lot, dog park, obstacles, and turf the NIFS area turf and pathway improvements, City Hall landscaping and Brentwood Park. There's actually been more progress since this picture was taken late last week. <clears throat> this is at uh, the Little Caesars Quad, Quad 2 at the sports complex. So virtually all the structures have been built, the walls, they'll be adding 
the trusses um, very soon. Uh, do you want to speak to this item? Um, it, it's it's progressing. I think they should be finished. Sure. He's actually. He, 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 did we introduce him yet? Uh, he took no. he took no. David Knapp's place as the project manager. construction manager. Al Torres. Good afternoon. My name is Al Torres. I'm the construction manager for the city of Stangelo. Um, Forgive me, I'm not dressed because I wasn't expecting to, to be here to present, but uh, I was at, at the restroom project today, actually earlier today, and like Carl said, the CMU walls are all the way up. Uh, everything is on schedule. They were a little bit behind when they started the CMU, but they've caught up. All the steel is on site, so they'll be uh, starting the, the roof structure and the ceiling uh, grid pretty soon. Uh, if You'll see all of these little openings uh, in the wall. That's something that the architect had designed with, with glazed brick that was going to go in those openings as a uh, visual pattern. Uh, when the project started, we found out those were six months behind, so they were going to be holding up the project. But good news is they have found them. They have found some, so that's not going to be an issue anymore. So anyway, the, the project is, is uh, up to speed, and it's, and it's looking good. What's the date of expected uh, completion? Uh, I'd have to look that up. Uh, does anybody remember? October? Yeah. And they are working with um, they are working with Parks and Recreation. We've had some A softball tournament out there or a baseball tournament. And I think we've got another one coming up Labor Day. So they're fencing around the construction area to keep people out of that area and keep the fields open so they can uh, keep working and keep playing. The Is it just this one picture? Is it just one picture? Yeah, okay. Sorry. The, the station 618 parking lot, you can see the chapel here. The chapel is uh, progressing rapidly. Uh, again, I was there earlier today. They have got their framing inspection. The insulation is in the walls, so they're, they're moving pretty quickly. The parking lot itself uh, was bid uh, a couple of weeks ago. It, was the, it came in a little bit more than what we have, uh, quite a bit more than what we Always. have available, but we are working with... Uh, our finance department to find the money to get that bid accepted and awarded. Uh, we should be going to the first September meeting both for the money and to get the bid awarded. Uh, if the money falls through, then uh, we won't be, we'll, we'll pull that award from the agenda and see, and regroup and see what we're going to do next. Is that asphalt? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. and, and we are looking. The other thing I'm doing right now, since since the money was was higher than what was anticipated, um, I am also looking at alternates. I'm doing cost uh -huh. estimates for uh, the project as bid included some landscaping, some walkways. As you know, this is a high pedestrian area, uh, the Ruffini Chapel. We expect a lot of volume there. To, uh, the senior centers there next door, so there's going to be a lot of uh, seniors, especially pedestrian traffic through there. So we want to make make sure that it's safe and. And then it's nice to look at it. We, we're trying to get that whole area developed. Uh, Would cobble uh, we, we're correct. be correct. Continue, continue the paving stones and all that. So we looked at pricing More brick modern. pavers for the entire parking lot. We looked at concrete, uh, and they were both higher than the asphalt. Asphalt is a little high right now because of the price of oil, but it, it was still a cheaper alternative than the other two. However, I'm also the third. The other alternative is getting rid of all the landscaping and all the, the curbs and the walks and all that stuff and coming in and just, just plain flat asphalt. But even that's pretty pricey. So we think that with the, the money difference, we're hoping that we can just find the source, the, the funding source and get it built as bid. So. Just putting those utilities underground, take away some of that. Like this this pole's going away. This pole's going away. Okay. Uh, all that's going underground. The line has already been dug underground from here, and then underground over to to there, and then behind the building is it's gone underground over to the senior center. So some of these poles down at the end are still going to be there. There's not a whole lot we can do. Although I'm working with them to see if maybe there is something we can do. That some of the ones along Chadburn, especially, there's a couple of poles there that we. We'd like to see them go away because, uh, you know, the the streets the streetscapes project, which is something else that we're doing and trying to extend down south, will will come along here eventually. 
So we're hoping that by landscaping and doing, that's the other part, the reason we want to go ahead and get this as bid, because with all the landscaping and stuff that's done along Chadburn there, we can consider that part of the streetscape project done, so that when we get to that part, we don't have to redo this this again. And and part of that is we'd like to see those poles going, but some of these are going. How many places? How many parking places are you required to have there? Uh, they were only required to have seven because of the, all the existing parking that's around there. Uh, but that senior center has a lot of parking there. I think the the lot as redone would have thirty three spaces. Questions? Al, is the uh, landscaping you're talking about, is that around the little chapel? Uh, yes, there's going to be uh, the side, the new sidewalk is going to come this way and it's going to do kind of a curve thing here um, so that cars can park, parallel park along here. And all of this is going to be brick paver. It's this pattern that you see in the existing sidewalk with these curves like this. It's going to continue out this way uh, with the circle get together in the front. And all this will be either exposed aggregate sidewalks or brick pavers. It's going to continue the pattern that's already there in, in these sidewalks that you can see along here. Actually, Donna, Crisp, and I work together on the landscape plan. And a lot of it's going to mimic what's at Old Town, so it'll, it'll, so it'll match Correct. and fit. Yeah, Carl and Donna work together, and they've—I mean—they've got the trees picked out, and the kinds of trees, and all and all that kind of stuff. So, assuming we can get the funding, it's going to be very nice. A great place, great place for us to go. Thank you very much. At the dog park, we've been successful in um, putting in all the obstacles at the small dog park and the big dog park. And we have had some success in getting turf established at both sites, as you can see here in these pictures. <clears throat> the main problem is just the, the quality of the soil. It's, it's not high quality soil. But we have established some decent coverage compared to what it was. I should have shown you before pictures too. So that project, that project has been done and with real good success and I keep telling folks this is now the the most attractive mm -hmm. public property in our city right now is at the Neffs area along the river near Celebration Bridge Parks has gone in and established new turf zoysia grass re redone the paved stones and the walkways it added some curbing to this area and it, it it's looked better better than it ever has since I've been here Parks has also finished the uh, landscaping at City Hall, mostly with trees and um, the paved stones, the paving material. This, this is on the, the west side of the auditorium. This is on also on the west side. That's on the back side, the north side of the auditorium. And that's on the east side of the auditorium. <clears throat> I think that's it on project updates. Oh, Brent, Brentwood Park. I don't have pictures of that. We're, we're slowly getting back to Brentwood Park. Can you give a quick, quick update? Good afternoon, Roger Hovlock, Park Senior Manager. Uh, Brentwood Park, uh, we went back to work on Brentwood Park for quite some time. We're still working on the sidewalks and the surrounds in that area. We're making our way back, what I would call, to the uh, west side of the park uh, and to where we're going to start working on a pavilion and the playground. Uh, the pavilion has been delivered uh, and some of the playground has been delivered. And so we'll be in the process of getting those things started here quite soon. We've gotten sidetracked again on some other projects, as you can see with City Hall and some of the other ones, we do get a little sidetracked with things that we have to get done. But our, our goal is to, to get back to Brentwood as soon as we can. Any questions?
Good afternoon. I'm Brent Casey, your recreation manager for the city of St. Angelo. I'm going to talk to you briefly about some of the things and brief you on how our summer has been going so far, even though we're not over, the pool's still open, so we can't say summer's over yet. Um, first one was summer camps. We started off great. Our, both of our locations at Southside and Carl Ray Johnson were both full with 60 kids at each location, so it was it was great. Uh, we did bring in more revenue this year. The kids seemed to leave a little bit earlier this year, uh, especially at Carl Ray Johnson. They seemed to drop down about half uh, in the last month. So um, that's just with kids, with us talking to the parents and finding out what's going on, taking vacations, going to see grandma before school starts and school starting earlier. So we may adjust that a little bit next year and see how we do there. We did uh, change the fees schedule a little bit this year. We raised it, increased it to uh, 65 per week per child. And we had a $20 holding fee. We didn't get any complaints about that. Uh, it seemed to work pretty well. So if the kid was going on vacation for a week, they paid the $20 holding fee that week. So everything went smoothly there. Uh, ended with a great party at uh, Southside and had lots of bouncy houses and inflatables out there for them. So they all had a good summer, no major injuries. So that's always a plus. Um, the pool, pool, pool's been doing very well this year. Uh, we added a couple other events. Last year we had an adult night uh, for 18 and over only, and it didn't do so well. We only had about 10 people show up, and most of those were city employees. This year we pushed it a little bit harder, and we increased it by 700%, so we had about 70, and people are begging for it again. So we're going to have one more before the summer is officially over, and that's going to be go on a part with Riverfest on September 15th. So at 6 p.m., people can come in, and it costs us $10 per person for that, but they can get the tickets here in just a couple days starting next week at our Park and Recreation office. Uh, the pool... Had, uh, has brought in more money this year than we did last, so that's a, also a good thing. We, it pool stays, uh, maintains itself, so that's a good thing. Um, no major issues with the equipment this year, knock on wood, but uh, th that's a good thing as well. So we're looking to do some major improvements to the whole surface of the pool, which is going to cost us about 60000 so it's a great thing to have everything going well. Uh, for some reason, we can't seem to get the chemicals just quite perfect at the beginning of the season, so we're going to start a little bit earlier next year. But the pool, the water has been clear, except for the first couple of days of the pool. Uh, it's been perfectly clear. We've had lots of compliments on the pool this year, so I'll give the staff all the credit for that, obviously. Uh, the track club, we increased our numbers by just a few this year for summer track. We jumped up from 142 to 147, so we had a great uh, turnout for the uh, Regional meet, which we had here the weekend after the 4th of July, we had 200 participants in that regional meet here in San Angelo, so that was a great thing. Um, we actually had 47 of our track athletes uh, qualify for the state-level competition with Texas Amateur Athletic Federation and the Texas Summer Games, and uh, we had about 26 of them actually went and competed. So 47 to qualify and then 26 to go and compete was a great thing as well. Um, and the Nature Center. The Nature Center is also doing better this year, bringing in more revenue, uh, doing great out there. The building's still falling apart, but we're doing what we can do to keep it together and maintain it and uh, keep things going. Summer camps out there, we had actually had two different sessions of summer camps uh, for a total of four. The younger ones were full. Um, we actually took more kids than what we said we were going to take because people were just kept bringing them in, kept bringing them in. So we were supposed to top it off at 15 for each one, and we had 17 for each one. The older sessions, they ended up usually around 8 or 10 kids, uh, and that's up to 12 years old. So the younger kids really love it. Uh, the older kids are starting to get a little bit older. I guess they'd rather be at home playing video games. But we'll work on that and get some more activities out there for them to uh, be more interested in the Nature Center and all the great things and animals we have out there. So that's part of what we've done this summer in a nutshell, but like I said, we're still not done. So any questions? Yes, sir. For you or not, but uh, I went out to the airport the other day and got a meal out there for lunch, and I decided I'd just drive through the park there. And I think there's some seed stock left out there from uh, our catfish day or whatever it was. Really? Oh, the prairie dogs? Yes. Oh, no. Probably, I, I saw about 20 of them. Prairie Where? Dogs. Oh, uh, no. Which side of the road? Uh, Knickerbocker? No, yes. but which side? They were just right, oh, they were uh, kind of west of the, right, north, right south of the beach area there, in that area. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that wasn't what he wanted to hear. Oh, no. I know I've checked it weekly, drove through there. I don't know how much time you spent there. I don't spend a lot of time 
out there as I'm driving through, but I've gone through there weekly since she's removed them all, and I haven't seen any. And my staff has informed me that they haven't seen any either from the Nature Center, and they're out there obviously every day. But if there's some out there, we'll, we'll continue to watch and go check it out. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely go out there on it and check it out. But. We'll check it out. Um, Grant? Yes, sir. You, you, two things. Uh, you said uh, in your report that the, the pool needed to be resurfaced, uh, $60,000 worth. Yes, sir. What's the story there? Uh, the, um, uh, what is that called? The, what is that? Lining. The yeah, the lining. It's not a lining. It's the, when they built the pool, re redid the pool a number of years ago, they, the, the smooth surface that they put down, we had a crack in there, so we had to get someone to come in and patch it. So we had them inspect the rest of it while we were there, while we had the pool emptied out and the drain there. Uh, it only goes in from the beach entry area and then stops right before you get to the four-foot four level area. Crack? But, Yes. Okay. Well, there was a crack and a hole, and they had to take out a, a section about from here, from me to Francis, and uh, repair that. But they also found some other areas that were weak, and they said it lasts about eight years, and it's been eight years. So uh, eight to ten years is the lifespan of it, and it's been eight years. So we may do it this year. We may just watch it and continue to monitor it and see if we can put it off another year, but it is coming in the very near future. Eight years, that pool has been remodeled? Re, uh, Yes, sir. Already? Yes. Yes. Uh, that seems like pretty quick uh, deterioration. <laughs> um, and the Nature Center, you said it was falling apart. I haven't heard anything about this. What is, what is it? Just an old building. Uh, okay. he's, he's exaggerating, but it, it is an old building. It's not falling apart, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it, it is safe, but it is an old building. And it's it, old. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's one if, of the reasons they have it on the list. Yes, if yes. we if we yes. if if the city wants to continue to provide that service, we highly recommend it be done in a new facility. Uh, question: How much does the uh, uh, no rather uh, does is there any kind of set aside for maintenance on the pool uh, in the budget? Yes. The, okay. Yes. And is there any uh, set aside for the uh, nature center? There's not a for the nature center. And how much money does the, you said it had a pretty good year. What what did it do? Which one? The Pool. nature center. Oh. Nature center, well, it's cur currently they are supposed to bring in 40, and currently they're sitting about 41. At, at the nature center, the expenses are higher than the revenue. At the pool, the, the revenue is a bit higher than the expenses. Okay. We can't say anything. But his brand has been newly remodeled. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, <laughs> thankfully, we do have that overage because we have a, a pool, pool of money to do repairs, which the, we tap into every year. And to the do pool repairs. has been declining every year from the number of people that come in to the pool. Now, we've increased certain programs. Um, we're currently sitting at about 160% as far as swim lessons and all that other stuff as far as the revenue that we brought in. And as far as the parties, we've increased them as well over the past couple of years. People actually just walking in the door is what we've been pushing and then trying to get some other events like the adult night because it had dropped. We didn't. We were like 35,000 short last year of making what we were supposed to make. This year, we're sitting at about probably 28,000 right now, but we still have two more weekends to go plus our event on September 15th. So. Make that much in a weekend? Sorry? Yeah. Right. You, you make that much in a weekend? Uh, not that much, no, sir. Okay. Oh, okay. But, but, it's been steadily but you're dropping getting closer to breaking even. Yes, <laughs> every year it gets closer. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions for Brent? Thank you, Brent. Thank you. <laughs> Grow up, Carl. Grow up. <laughs> I think we're getting short on time. I can go through Riverfest right quick. Please do. Otherwise, Laurie would have to close. The this is the sixth annual Riverfest. It's the uh, All American Chevrolet Riverfest. This is since the first year we hadn't had a concert Friday night. We're bringing that back this year with the Tejano concert and a family-friendly uh, concert on Friday night at the River Stage. Then we kick off Saturday with a full day of activities. We went in partnership with Downtown San Angelo and Operation Blue Shield for the run this year. Um, I have brochures on, on Riverfest. Okay, so we've got that. <clears throat> this is the logo for this year. One of these years we're gonna stick with the logo and, and keep <laughs> not change it every year. 
Uh, Lily Fest is also in, in conjunction with us this year. They've been on a different weekend the last few years, but they're back together with us. They're having an international symposium this year, hosting folks um, the, the few days before the event, and then they, they have their regular Lily Fest on the same day as us. Golf tournaments, a so, uh, sand volleyball tournament, the kids court. We've added a few things to the kids court this year. We'll have concessions and vendors. Um, well, we're still with Grogan's, but we're working now with Happy Trails. They're going to provide kayaks for the public to use on the river. Um, the Vega Washer Pitching is doing a kids washing pitch, pitching uh, tournament. We'll have the flag football games going on at the kids area. Live music with local groups underneath Chabron Stage. The Vega Washer Pitching, the main tournament in the afternoon. The Girl Scout canoe races are back with us. They've been away a few years, but they've joined us back again. Uh, we're doing something new this year with Adult Olympics, some crazy fun ga games, competitive games. Recreation will host canoe races at towards the end of the day. Uh, we've got an adult event at the pool in conjunction at the same time with the, the concert that night, which ends the event with the Josh Abbott Band. That's it for Riverfest. Any questions? Yeah. We had that in our packet, yeah, right? The, the schedule, yes. The, the detail of the agenda. The, right, the okay. press release with the details. Okay. okay, no more questions? Then we have the consideration for future agenda items. For a meeting to take place on September 27th. We, we have evidently Lake Nathworthy priority list. Anything else? I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, one of the organizations I belong to on July 31st, we had an event here in the convention center. And I guess we have uh, something to do with the convention center. I'm not sure what we do. But anyway, we had an event here in uh, one of our park people was uh, one part of our entertainment and I thought it was a very good event we had about 700 people here and I'd like to come in to staff and make sure they get the commendations on this they did an excellent job on the facilities they had everything uh, set up and uh, it, was, it was really nice and we had a congressman with us that spoke to us from a district north of us in district 11 in uh, Lubbock uh, Joey Arrington spoke at the convention he was really impressed with the facilities so thank you all for the city of San Angelo for this, uh, this good facility that we have here for events like that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any more comments? Any other items? Carl, I'd like to pass on a thank you to the city. Um, a couple months ago, we had a, a tour around the lake with the city manager and the Mayor and yes, Tom I was there. Long. Yes, and you. <laughs> and we asked for some red lights, caution lights, to be put up on the dam. Yeah. And I was out there last night, and I was so happy to see those. Um, I don't know if, for those of you that haven't been here for a long time, maybe 11 years ago we had a tragic boat accident. A um, couple younger individuals put their boat on the on the water after dark, and we're having a great time out on the lake and they thought they were crossing under Lake Nasworthy Bridge and they were going off the dam and they went and the gates of the dam only stick about this high above the water level so it's not visually very uh, so it's dark you know you just don't know anyway they went off and over and one was killed and one lived I, I believe but anyway since that time I've been harping on that how easy would it be to put red caution lights on that and Thank you very much. I saw those up the, there last that night. That was the operations department that did yes. that. Thank you. Welcome. I do have one last thing to mention. Please. Ida Rios uh, has, is leaving us. Uh, this, she'll be here one more week. She's got a lot of things going on with her family, and so she needs to step back and focus on that. So. Well, uh, Ida has been a great part of our meetings, and mm -hmm. I know that I've only been here for three years, 
and uh, I was amazed how well the minutes were kept. Uh, not too many surprises there, which is fantastic. So thank you. He Ida. does them. I just review them. Thank you very much. And, and your smile when you arrive at the building of the Parks and Recreation is something that we will evidently long for if you're not replaced by somebody like you. <laughs> I agree. She's, she's, in terms of administrative assistant, um, she's the best I've ever worked with. And I'm getting old. I believe it. Oh. Thank you. I'm going to miss you. Mm. <laughs> not going to the oil fields, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that said, uh, we Everybody adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>